Unit 7, Part 7, Practice. So this is your review for Unit 7. Um, so we had three methods of solving quadratic equations that we learned. Week 1, we talked about factoring. So problems 1 and 2 are set up to solve by factoring. Um, week 2, we talked about square roots, solving by square roots. So problems 3 and 4 are set up for that. And then week 3, we talked about the quadratic formula. So problems five and six are set up for this method. Um, then there's problem seven and eight where you get to choose what method you use. Um, one thing to note, um, factoring, not all quadratic equations can be factored. Um, many of them can, but not all of them can. Um, so just make sure um, that if it can't be factored, that doesn't mean it can't be solved. Um, solving by square roots. Um, not all quadratic equations can be solved by square roots. So again, just because it can't be solved by square roots doesn't mean it can't be solved. Um, but every quadratic equation can be solved. Every quadratic equation can be solved by the quadratic formula. Um, so that one works for every quadratic equation. Um, sometimes it's not the fastest method, um, but it it can be used for every single one. I would like you to do problems one and two by factoring, do problems three and four by square roots just so you get that practice, um, but then the remainder of them you can do the quadratic formula if you prefer. On the summative you do get um, choice as to what method you would like to use. You just have to um, identify the method that you are using and you do have to show your work for the method that you are using. Um, so every question is going to have a follow-up question of submit a picture of your work. Um, I'm going to tell you this right now, so I hope everyone's listening um, to this video. For your summative, at the end of this week, when you take it, you're going to answer the question, and then the very next question, you're going to have to upload a picture of your work. Um, so one, I want you to make sure you're showing your work. And two, I want to see what methods you're using, and I want to make sure I can give you feedback on those methods. Um, so please make sure that when you complete your summative, you are not erasing your work if you're doing it digitally. I know some of you guys are using like your notes app on your phone, which is awesome. I love that you're using technology in that way. Um, but please make sure that you take screenshots so that you can submit those. Um, also, side note, if submitting them via Schoology um, is difficult, you can just take all those screenshots and send them in an email to me, and I will still give you credit for it that way. Um, if, if you ever have a question on how to best get credit for your work, please reach out and email me. I want to be flexible and I want to work with you guys, but that comes with you reaching out to me because um, that's how this asynchronous online work works. You have to do take that first step to reach out to me. But once you do, I am I will be as helpful as I possibly can. All right, um, so if you would like to stick around, um, I did provide you extra factor boxes in case you choose to factor some of them. That's your choice. If you want to use them, use them. If not, totally fine. Um, I'm going to go through a couple problems with you. If you want to watch them, if you want to follow along, that is your choice. If you want to be done watching this video and just do the work on your own, also your choice. Um, use this video however it works best for you. Um, but I am going to jump into doing some math with you guys. So uh, reach out if you have any questions. Problem one, um, this one is by factoring. So I gave you that factor box in the corner that you can use if you need it. Um, so I can see that this uh, quadratic equation, 2x squared minus 6x plus 4, is already set equal to 0. So that's step 1. Always make sure your quadratic equation is set equal to 0. Um, then I'm looking 2x squared minus 6x plus 4. All of those are even numbers, which means they can be divided by 2, meaning I could factor out a 2. So I factor out that 2, and I get x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals zero. So now this middle piece is what I'm factoring, x squared minus 3x plus 2. I don't need to use the my factor box because the coefficient is a 1, which means I just need um, numbers that multiply to make 2, which is just 1 and 2. 
but then add to make negative 3. So to make negative 3, we're going to need to make both our 1 and our 2 negative, because a negative times a negative is a positive, but a negative plus a negative is another negative. So when I factor this, it's going to be x minus 1 and x minus 2. So now that I have my quadratic equation factored, I can find my solutions by setting each of those factors equal to zero. We're using that zero product property. So I can say x minus 1 is equal to zero, and x minus 2 is equal to zero. Just need to solve those equations, so we undo the minus 1 with a plus 1, and we get x equals 1. And then undo that minus 2 with a plus 2, and we get x equals 2. So my method was factoring, and my solution is x equals 1, comma, 2. And that's a refresher on solving by factoring. So for problem 2, you get to solve by factoring. Um, your first step is to make sure that that equation is set equal to 0. So um, make sure you rewrite that equation first. All right, solving by square roots. So three and four are that week two method, solving by square roots. Um, so if it's in this form, I would really recommend. So this is um, what's called vertex form. Um, that was also in your um, uh, vocab sheet for unit seven. Um, and vertex form is something we're gonna talk more in depth about next unit. Um, but if your quadratic equation looks like this, I would really recommend um, solving by square roots. So solving by square roots is the one that you don't need it to be equal to zero. Um, we want to get that square root of the square piece. So our goal is to start by getting this x plus 3 squared all by itself. So we're going to undo. We're going to undo that minus 2 with a plus 2. And we get 196 is equal to 4 times x plus 3 squared. So again, I want to get this by itself, which means I need to get rid of that 4. That 4 is being multiplied by the parentheses, so we're going to divide by 4 on both sides. When I do that, 196 divided by 4 is 49. And then when I divide by 4, it gets rid of those 4s, leaving me with x plus 3 squared. Uh, um, all the numbers on one side and then just the squared piece on the other side, that's when we can take the square root of both sides. So we take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root of 49, remember that gives me plus or minus the square root of 49, which is 7, the positive and the negative is equal to, when we take the square root of something squared, it's just that something that's left. So it's just going to be that x plus 3. And so now this gives us those two equations that we need to solve. We're going to have x plus 3 is equal to positive 7. And then we have x plus 3 is equal to that negative 7. Undo plus 3 with a minus 3, and we get 7 take away 3 is 4. And then again, undo that plus 3 with a minus 3, and we get x is equal to negative 10. So my method was square root, and my solution is x equals negative 10, comma, 4. All right, so Number four is also set up to solve by square roots. Um, in this case, you just have to get that x squared by itself first, then take the square root of both sides. Um, so the square root method works really well when you just have um, no x term. You can see that there's an x squared term. So if we think of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, that standard form. If you just have that x squared term and a c term like we have here, um, but we have nothing with just a regular x, um, it does work really well for that. Also, um, 
when it's written in that vertex form that we saw in that previous equation. Um, so the, that's when you see it look like that, the square root method is a really good method. Um, all right, so problem number five and six were set up for that quadratic formula. Um, I'm not going to go over the quadratic formula since we just did, um, and that should be fresh in your mind. Um, one thing to note about problem six is we do want to make sure that, that we set that equation equal to zero before we start using that quadratic formula. So I'm going to go through that with you um, just because this one is a little different. Um, so we can set either side equal to zero. I'm just going to make this side equal to zero which means I'm going to subtract this 8x squared. And when I subtract this 8x squared, I am going to subtract it from this 6x squared since they are like terms. So 6 take away 8 is negative 2. We still have that plus 30. We still have the 7x. And 8 take away 8 cancels out. So then to make this side truly equal to 0, we also have to subtract the 7x from both sides. Now when I subtract 7x from both sides, there's nothing with an x on the left-hand side that I can combine it with or subtract it from. There's no like term. So on the left-hand side, we're just going to rewrite all those terms in standard form. So starting with our highest exponent, going down to that term with no variable. And then 7 take away 7 is 0. So that's how we would rewrite that, and now that we have that rewritten, you can identify your a, your b, and your c, and then plug those into that quadratic formula. All right? Um, questions 7 and 8, you get to choose. Do you want to factor it? Do you want to use the square root method, or do you want to do the quadratic formula? Um, 7, I would say either factor or quadratic formula would be the two best methods for that one. And then for number seven, um, oh, that should say number eight, excuse me. For number eight, also factoring or the quadratic formula would be the best method to use. Um, so once you have completed all eight problems, do the check-in, um, then take your quiz, and then you will be ready for your summative um, once you have completed all of that. Again, if you have any questions at all or need any help, please reach out. Otherwise, go ahead and get to work.